Hi, this is Dean Webb for NetworkingForums.com. Tonight's subject is 802.1x. 802.1x is used in network access control on the wired environment and is also used quite often in a wireless environment. In fact, it's built into wireless access. It's not entirely built into wired access, so there can be some weird things that happen with it. But if you're doing a NAC project and or if you're involved in wireless, I strongly recommend that you go to your favorite bookstore or book website and purchase 802.1x port-based authentication by Edwin Brown. I, it, it's not hard to remember. Edwin Brown, 802.1x port-based authentication. You type in the title 802.1x port-based authentication. There's one book, one author. What? You want that book. It's very well written. It's a pretty quick read. Uh, talks has a history of NAC, or sorry, 802.1x, and how it relates to NAC. And then it has a troubleshooting section. It's an incredible resource. I 100% recommend you go and get it. If that's part of your job, you want 802.1x port-based authentication by Edwin Brown. Now, if, however, you're not going to go buy the book and you're desperate for some tips, here they are. Let's say you have a device that's not able to get on a network. What's the problem? Do a trace. Just before you do anything else, do a trace to see where the communication is failing. And it's pretty simple to tell. Uh, in 802.1x, you have the supplicants. Those are the devices trying to connect to the network. You have the authenticators. Those are the switches or wireless controllers that are handling the communications. And then you have the authenticating device or authenticating server. That's the radius server in the back end that's going to take information from the switch, check it against Active Directory or a certificate authority, and see if it validates and then send that back to the switch or the wireless controller. And then based on that information, the, the layer two device will then allow that supplicant on the network or deny it access. Now, every communication between the supplicant and that switch or wireless controller, and I'll just call it the switch in this case. Every communication between those two is going to be a uh, either a request or a response. Every time a switch sends the communication to the supplicant, it is a request. Every time that communication comes back, it is a response. You will see this in the trace. Request from the switch, response from the client. Always that way. Those are, They're always labeled that way. So if you see a request but no response, that means the supplicant failed to, failed to do something. It received the message or the message went out and for whatever reason the client shut down. If you see a response and then no follow-up request, then the authenticator, the switch, stopped. Now, if those are all going fine, you then want to do a trace between the switch and the radius server. Are those communications going properly? Now those aren't going to be the same 802.1x request response that we saw between the client or the supplicant and the switch. This will be normal radius traffic. Is it on the correct port? Is it on, you know, do they have the right shared secret between them? And if those are set up right, well then, okay, that communication happened fine. The only other thing you have left to do is go to the radius server and test to see if it can access the Active Directory or the Certificate Authority or other directory service correctly and do an authentication. And if that works, if that works, if there's communication between the switch and the radius server, if there's communication flow between the supplicant and the switch, you're able to demonstrate that all these pieces are in place and that we need to take a look at the client take a look at the client. Take a look at the client. I say that three times because that's where a majority of the 802.1x problems are going to be resolved. Once you've done the initial testing and you've got the setup going and you can verify that yeah there you've established communications between the switch and the radio server, the radio server and the directory service and you've got you've actually tested that with your own client and he's got on 
everything worked. Everything worked. It, it doesn't work for some and not for others. It works. The only reason it won't work for the other guys trying to connect is if there's something wrong with that client. But you can use these traces to demonstrate where it may be failing. Uh, to give an example, one that we saw was the uh, the Android 2.1x communications began, there's a negotiation, uh, the switch says, I'll give you ETLS, and the supplicant said, no, I don't want that. I want to use PEEP, and the switch says, I'll give you PEEP, and then the supplicant just stopped. It didn't do anything. That was a supplicant failure. We had to find out why. We looked in the databases for that particular device and found ah okay it's expecting to do these things or it does this with the MAC address. Uh, I devices can do weird things, Windows devices can do even weirder things. So hit that knowledge base early. Once you have that trace to show that the communication failed at this point and it was the client not sending a, its response, you've got something. So that should get you started with 802.1x but by all means, if you are involved in wireless or wired NAC, get Edwin Brown's 802.1x port-based authentication. Read it. It's one of the best books you'll read on the topic. In fact, it may be the only book you read on the topic, but it's a good one. So, for NetworkingForums.com, I'm Dean Webb.